In this video, we'll clarify what we mean by loudness, investigate how our hearing works, why we're changing our metering systems, and the solution to jumps in loudness that consumers complain about so much. Loudness is the perceived strength of a piece of audio, so how loud we perceive it to be. And this can depend on level, frequency, content, and duration. It's not just about level. After all, level is only an electrical measurement of the audio signal. Viewers and listeners often complain about the jumps in loudness. For example, looking at one 40-day period for a major UK broadcaster, they received a hundred complaints relating to loudness issues. Now, 61 of those related to the background sound being too high, which, strictly speaking, isn't a loudness issue. It's one of intelligibility, the ability to be able to hear the words clearly. 20 of those complaints were about volume jumps between content, so program trailers or announcements being louder than the content around them. On commercial television channels, the biggest issue is with adverts and trails being much louder than the programmes they sit in. Then 19 of those complaints were about the volume range within programmes being too high. And this often relates to the dialogue being quiet or too indistinct, and then suddenly everything gets much louder. And then when viewers change channel, the volume can go up and down as well. So the overall loudness has become a serious issue for consumers. But before we go on any further, how do we perceive loudness? Let's take a look at how our ears work. And to help, I'm going to play you some audio clips. Now, to get the best results, I do recommend that you listen to this video on some reasonable quality speakers or headphones. You won't really get the full benefit from these examples if you're only listening on small computer speakers. So firstly, listen to these two audio clips and decide which one of them is louder. Some of you will have perceived that the first clip is louder. Others will have perceived the second is louder. And some of you will have perceived that they're about the same. So now let's take a look at those two audio clips with a peak level meter. And you can see that they're very different. But actually, both clips were very similar in loudness. Here are another pair of sounds. Again, have a listen and decide which is louder. Now, hopefully you perceive them to be very similar in loudness, but don't worry if you thought that one of them was louder than the other. The key issue here is that we actually all perceive loudness differently. Again, if we show them on a peak level meter, you'll see that they're very different.
So what's actually going on here? Well, firstly, the ear-brain combination doesn't register all frequencies that you can hear equally. For example, lower pitch sounds require much more energy into the eardrum to be perceived as being equally loud to mid-range speech frequencies. Secondly, although our ears react to changes in level pretty quickly, our brain doesn't register a change in loudness unless that change in level persists for at least 400 milliseconds, so just under half a second. Now, this isn't news. Back in the 1930s, research was undertaken by Fletcher and Munson, and from all their listening tests, these curves were drawn up. And again, they show that our hearing is much less sensitive to very low frequencies and somewhat less sensitive to very high frequencies, but our hearing is very sensitive to the sort of mid-high frequencies. And these are the sounds that relate to the fight or flight choice. So all the sorts of alarm sounds from other animals or from leaves rustling or twigs breaking are all in this sort of area of the frequency spectrum. And these differences make it somewhat harder to develop a loudness meter that will respond the same way as our hearing. But also, these different clips that I've played you show that the peak level meter that we have tended to use in broadcasting clearly doesn't tell us how loud each of those clips are. So we need a little bit of history. In the late 1930s, as radio broadcasting was being established around the world, there was obviously a real need to develop a reliable meter to display the signal that was being sent to the transmitter. Now, here in the UK, the BBC developed their Peak Programme Meter, or PPM for short. But at the same time, the German broadcasters were undertaking similar research. But obviously, because of the timings, they couldn't collaborate with their BBC colleagues. But they too developed a very similar peak reading meter. Whilst in the US, radio broadcasters were also looking at this same issue but they realised that PPMs with their additional electronics would be very expensive to roll out across all the broadcasters. So instead, looked for a passive, low-cost solution and settled on what we know today as the VU meter. However, as technology developed, and especially as digital technology was introduced into the US, they too started using peak reading meters. But as we've seen, peak reading meters do not display loudness. Then when we moved into a hybrid analog digital world, we set our reference so that we would have around 10 dBs of headroom above our maximum peak level. And in theory, that headroom was never used. Or was it? Now, as we've seen, quasi PPMs don't show all the peaks. So in reality, we were actually using some of that headroom which is one of the reasons why it was there. Now, because of all this history and since the early days of radio, the delivery specs from broadcasters have all been built around peak level. And this has resulted in everybody matching or normalising programmes to a standard peak level, usually somewhere around minus 9 or minus 10 dBFS, so around 10 dBs below the digital headroom. To help make things sound louder, but remain in spec, audio compression techniques have been developed, with the end result that we've been experiencing a loudness wars in broadcasting, with producers and directors each wanting their content to be louder than anybody else's, whilst still not breaking the rules by going over the maximum peak level permitted. In addition, with the changes in working practices and the introduction of multi-skilling into the audio production process, normalising to peak level can be a hit and miss process. So now that we have broadcast production workflows that are digital from acquisition to the consumer, there is no need to leave all that headroom unused. And also in this digital world, we no longer need to concentrate our metering on peak level. So let's just remind ourselves of the issues. Firstly, broadcasters get a lot of consumer complaints about loudness issues. 
We've now changed to a digital end-to-end -end workflow and we're using multi-skilled staff in the production process who tend to want a number to work to. And finally, in a digital workflow, peak level metering and normalization are no longer appropriate. And just to confirm that point, listen to these two montages of these same clips. The first has been normalized to a peak level of minus 10 dBFS, and the second has been normalized to a target loudness. By enabling peer and self-assessment to take place in the class, this does not mean that the teacher is losing control of the learning. Kill the loudness wars now. Whether it's adverts, announcers, or mumbling actors that get people complaining. Buy yourself a loudness meter and stop the complaints dead. So, I'll leave you to your prayers, Omar. Thanks, Mrs. Chaudhary. I'll be down to eat straight after. It's Omar. I'm out. Yeah, no problems. At the Chaudhry's, yeah. By enabling peer and self-assessment to take place in the class, this does not mean that the teacher is losing control of the learning. Kill the loudness wars now. Whether it's adverts, announcers, or mumbling actors that get people complaining. Buy yourself a loudness meter and stop the complaints dead. So, I'll leave you to your prayers, Omar. Thanks, Mrs. Chaudhary. I'll be down to eat straight after. It's Omar. I'm out. Yeah, no problems. At the Chaudhry's, yeah. Hopefully you can start to see the benefit of normalizing to a target loudness. And that's the solution that we're going to be looking at. As you can see, what we need is a system that can measure loudness just like our ears do and provide a definitive measurement for the loudness of a program. And then we can normalize all our content to a standard loudness measurement rather than normalizing to peak level. To achieve this, we need a meter that can measure and display loudness just as our ears hear loudness. And so the standard loudness measurement, BS1770, was developed and has become a single universal worldwide standard for measuring loudness. And all the broadcaster's delivery specs are based on this one BS1770 standard. A number of governments and broadcasters across the world are addressing this problem with legislation. In the US, the law is called the CARM Act and it's supported by the ATSC A85 standard. France and Spain have also passed laws to control all their broadcasters' channels' loudness using the EBU R128 standard. Whereas other countries like Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Norway and the UK have all voluntarily implemented the EBU R128 recommendations across all their TV broadcast channels. And Austria have even made a bold claim that they have reduced all their loudness complaints to zero.